he goes because uh, I think I quite liked him as up, when he was up front when he came on his little cameo last game mm -hmm. uh, which God feels like a very long time ago yeah now. it does yeah um, but yeah I liked him he looked fast so he can probably do some damage from the wings he's tall um, so yeah I think he's going to be a really good impact him and Chislik can sort of do what uh, Rudy and Asal used to do last year or the year before last they swap, swap wings without even mm -hmm. positioning in that and so uh, hopefully we can see some exciting attacking today hopefully so and actually lots of options on the bench there with Sam Pearson Zach Robinson and new signing from Cambridge on loan, Psycho Jana as well. Um, Simon, we've got the two new lads coming in, Little and Al Hamadi. Do you have much knowledge of these two? Little, I watched quite a bit of at Torquay in the National mm -hmm. League. Um, so then he was kind of a 10, got good quality in his right foot, could shoot her from distance, mm -hmm. uh, got a goal in him. So it'd be interesting whether he plays as a 10 and, and Pelly as a 6 or. Or if they go the other way, I know Pelly, Pelly's been playing a bit higher this year. Yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting which way they they line up. But yeah, Little was an attacking, arrived in the box, decent finisher off his right foot. So it'd be yeah, it'd be uh, interesting to see which way they go with that one. We're just looking quickly, very briefly. We were looking at the Stockport lineup uh, this afternoon, and we've got a couple of Stock fans with us this afternoon who uh, talk us through in a bit more detail in a little while. But um, first thing that struck me, Simon, was uh, Paddy Madden, their top scorer, just on the bench today. Yeah, no Paddy Madden, which would be interesting. Um, no Alafe, the boy from Millwall, which is, um, has been a recent signer there. He's paid some money for him. He's an energetic, full of pace and power, ex-Sutton Loney. Um, so it, they've got none of him in today. So, yeah, whether they go, obviously, Wooten as a nine and play two off him. Mm -hmm. Or, um, yeah, it would be interesting how they, how they line up with that one. Mm. Uh, as I say, we get stock fans on in a bit to talk us through their lineup and their, and their current form. But so I'm going to talk about you for for the moment. So, as we said, uh, recently just left Portsmouth after what was it about 18 months? Yeah, just there. over 18 months, I think. Yeah. yeah, enjoyed your time there. Yeah, um, good club, big club, um, big job on there. Lots to do. Um, just probably never got enough. Say enough time, you know. Mm -hmm. Time's one thing you're, you're affording little of in yeah. football, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot to do there. Certainly, when when I came in, there was a big overhaul in the squad. Um, still, some overhaul that needed doing at the time. Um, yeah, just yeah, just probably run out of time. A few injuries this year have never helped us. Uh, started the season really well. Yeah. Um, then took some injuries on, lost a bit of form, and then just couldn't find it quick enough back. Um, and then obviously uh, the, the managers got moved on. I stayed on for a couple of weeks to, to take the team, which was um, enjoyable. Um, some good some good memories here. Tottenham away, of obviously, course, yeah. and uh, two away games at Bolton, which were tough. Um, but yeah, good learning curve, and yeah, keen to see what else comes up there. Mm. I mean, you had a couple of spells as caretaker with us, of course. Is it mm -hmm. something you want to now look at? You had time at Barnet as well. Yeah. Is it something you want to actually looking at now? Is that something to go into maybe a first team role, first team management role somewhere along the line? Um, yeah, I think I'm open to anything really. When I when I left Wimbledon the first time, um, that was how I see my next role as being a manager. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, then COVID came along and it was mm. difficult. Um, managed to get an opportunity at Barnet, and they was not in a great place when I, I think they was the only ones that would have me at the time. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> but yeah, enjoyed it. You know, thought I'd done well there. Got them going. Uh, got some organisation into some, some structure. We we became a, a good game, a good team for everyone in that league. Um, and then yeah, just the stuff going on at Barnet and the Portsmouth opportunity came, and it was kind of like a. One or the other, got to take it now. Um, and again, with COVID and everything, I thought Portsmouth was the be the safer option mm -hmm. for, from a family perspective. So I went with that one, and yeah, chance to work at a big club. Obviously, worked with Danny and Nicky, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just continue learning and continue moving on, and, and we'll see what comes up in the future. Mm -hmm. just, just wanted to touch on the fact you've had like a couple of spells as interim manager. What is that like? Is it how difficult is it to rally a, a team that maybe has lost the management team now, and you've got to step in and kind of find that, and find a, a team that works within that squad? Yeah. Obviously. Uh, when I was at Wimbledon, obviously the two spells, I was really close with the players there, so I had no problem with that. I thought they, they were well respected in the dressing room, uh, got on well with the players, uh, so galvanising that and giving them a, a, a different structure. Obviously when you're coaching, you have an opinion, and obviously it's the manager's final say. Um, and then, yeah, when you come into it and as, a, as a caretaker manager, just trying to 
sort of tidy up some little bits that you think maybe wasn't going right and, and that was fine. Uh, Barnett, I went in on the back of, I think they'd won three games in 28 um, and we won five in 13. Again, just getting a bit of organisation, get a bit of clarity in their roles. Uh, I think you know that the simplicity of it is they, once they buy into it, they can move forward really quickly. So, yeah, it's a... It's a it's an interesting role, this one. We came off the back, we had a one, I think we'd won one in ten at, Pomp, at Portsmouth and we was having to chop and change the team because of injuries and, and whatever. Um, yeah, then you get thrown in at Tottenham away. Um, <laughs> not the easiest of Not the easiest, but in all honesty, the boys were brilliant. You know, we set up there for that game. It's not a system that I'd normally play, but it's a system on the day that I thought would work and ultimately we restricted Tottenham to a one shot on target. Uh, just that would be Harry Kane, was quite good. <laughs> yeah, as we well know. Yeah, course. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously we, we lost 1 0 that game, and then, you know, it's just trying to then patch a team together for the Papa Johns on the Tuesday because we have some who were ineligible, some were suspended. So, just fi- trying to find a team for that and then bolting away again the next game. So, uh, it was a busy, hectic week. Um, but then we had a good week's training on the, just a week before I left. So, um, that was disappointing. We never got to really see the, the Saturday game out because we've done a lot of preparation that that week to, to be able to beat and keep a clean sheet. And for that stage, for us to score the first goal was, would have been huge. And you know, ultimately they managed to do that under the new manager. Um, and the clean sheet kept, and they've they've won a couple of games since. So yeah, good for that. Is this? You've been you've been back to down to talk, talking about today's game. You've been to Palais now on a few occasions. You must have come was it once or tw- twice with Portsmouth last season. Once I had COVID. Uh, okay, right. Sorry. In the, okay. John's in, the, in the five three. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that cost me a ten on I follow. Surely, you're surely not. Surely you're not getting these free. Surely, no, really. Wow. Free. Yeah. Obviously, the league game. Yeah. Um, when we came down, was was tight. And, mm. you know, Is that a Lee Brown brace? No, that was year before. Year before, yeah. before. So I think it was, it was a nil-nil. I think yeah. it was a bit drab and <laughs> we'd come off of not playing for two and a half weeks. It was just sort of trying to get back into it. Um, yeah, so I've been, that was the first time as an opposition coach. Obviously I've been uh, probably a dozen times now as, okay. a, as a fan stroke yeah. um, scout. <laughs> um, we might have mentioned that in a minute, actually. But yeah, what have you made of us then this this season? We obviously we, we obviously came down to it again in the Papa John's Trophy uh, uh, down to Fratton Park earlier in the season. We're looking at our last five at the screen at the moment, um, where we've, we we had a really good run of form unbeaten, yeah. and then we've hit a little bit of a, a stickier spell. But what have you made of us and our progress over the last couple of months? Well, obviously, there's, I think there's been a big change in, in um, the thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, off the back of last season. No wins in 27, was it? Yeah. Um, hey, thanks for reminding us. Yeah. <laughs> um, I felt your pain on all of them, trust me. Um, <laughs> yeah, then obviously you, you come into a new season with a new manager. He had a way he wanted to play. Yeah. Um, you know, and ultimately come to a point where he changed. Uh, been a bit more pragmatic now. Yeah. Um, probably play forward a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, which probably suits the Wimbledon fan base. I think yeah. they like it a, a bit faster. Up and up and at them, yeah. Yeah, a bit more forward, a bit more fast. Um, and obviously, you've been on a good run since then. You lost one in ten, was it? One beating in Yeah, yeah, one then, in twelve, yeah. And then obviously now, I think we've won one in seven, is it? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so today makes a really good game because mm. you win today, you can go past Stockport and you're right looking into getting to the playoffs. Um, but I think going forward, the next seven or eight games are really tough yeah. so you know it's a it's a big game today and hopefully we can get the three points and, and, and move upwards and move up. Yeah. look at those uh, those five games and you think when you get to Hartley you think oh 22nd and then you got Jills who obviously have got their, their new man yeah. uh, new ownership and seem to be really taking the steps in the right direction yeah. made some really really clever signings um, to try and keep themselves in the division but Leighton Orient as we know are no easy uh, team I mean beat them when they came to us earlier in the season but they'll be up for it this time they want that um They'll want revenge for that, for that yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then obviously Carlisle and Northampton also fighting at the top end of the table as well. Yeah, really, really tough run of games coming up but as uh, Simon says yeah big game today and hopefully one that we can get three points a big three points against a team looking to get into the playoff positions uh, Simon we're going to thank you very much for taking the time to come speak to us You're we're going to we're going to um, let you go now but before we do I just want to mention we had a nice little photo of you um, 
as we were loading, provide to broadcast with you in your playing kit from your playing days with us. Now, George, George might just remember you playing for us. No, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I don't. No. <laughs> it's a bit before my time. Only just. Only a couple of years, a but not quite. Years. Tom, any... Uh, Any <laughs> no. <laughs> Anything you want to admit to? Uh, I was two years old. Well, okay. <laughs> no. trust, trust me, it wasn't very memorable. <laughs> oh no. The play inside was uh, not very memorable. We got we got better, a little bit more memorable when we went into the coaching aspect. So you never miss much. Oh, I'll tell you, those days, those CCL days, no, very memorable, great days, <laughs> very great, great days. But no, Simon, thank you very much. Ten times, please. Uh, enjoy the game today. Yeah, thank you. And um, we'll luck. catch up with Simon. Thank yeah, you very cheers. much. Thank cheers. Care, guys. So we're going to now head into highlight of our last meeting with Stockport from September. We are back and uh, welcome back everyone to the Power Lane. If you're just joining us, I'm Nick Draper, joined to my right by Tom Large. And we've now been joined by uh, visiting fans, uh, we've got Russ and Dan from Stockport, season ticket holders. And we've also been joined in the background by the beautiful dulcet tones of Ivor Heller. So um, we hope you can hear us all right. Remember, if you are watching, add your comments to the video, let us know how we're sounding and also give us your predictions for this afternoon's game. Uh, Russ, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. Thank you for talking to us. We were talking very briefly with Simon Bassey about the, uh, your lineup today and the absence of Paddy Madden. Do you want to sort of explain how you're going about the, uh, the game today with a slight change of shape, you think? Yeah, change of shape in terms of the attacking third, definitely, but not not uh, back five or the, or the middle three as, as much. So we'll probably line up with a f um, five at the back, so two wing backs. Um, and three in midfield with probably Hippolyte just behind Wooten up front. That's that's the way we see it today. Um, 
Paddy Madden, we said on the bench. What's, what's, so what's happening with Paddy Madden? I don't think it's anything in particular. He was ill a couple of weeks ago, um, but he's been back since then. He played 60 minutes um, against Northampton, I think it was. So I think it's just... It's just the fixture build-up, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. He's, he's managing the squad and probably feels that Madden will... I think he will come on, definitely. Um, and you'll see him probably last 20, last 30 minutes. So how have you felt this season's gone? Before the season kicks off, lots of people have said to would be fancy to go straight through the divisions, uh, investment gone in, um, and currently you find yourself 10th in the table. It's all a bit of a retained inconsistent start to the season in the early days. Yeah, definitely. Um, poor start to the season. Uh, we, were, we were, like I say, favourites to go do the double bounce, get into the top three. I'd have been happy with top seven if you'd have given that at the start. Uh, we had a really poor start due to uh, the... The number of players that we brought in, we brought eight new players, so they had to bed in and they had to sort of gel. Um, but that started now, um, and we're, uh, I won't say firing on all cylinders, but we're playing a lot, lot better. Okay, so, Dan, who would you say you sort of made, you know, best, apart from Madden, obviously, who in this season you really standing out for? I'd say Carla, he's definitely um, playing back from the national team. Little trouble, and he's busy. Well, he's a centre midfielder. He's played in the back line. He's just controlled games quite well. Played balls left, right, centre for Hitler. What do you think of Stockton? Well, then. He's just been really class. Okay. So, I mean, centre midfielder might be an area where, yeah, we might, we've got a new player next day. We'll see how we go. Could be a difficult one. We picked out your manager as well, Dave Chana. I noticed, and viewers are familiar with the podcast will know uh, Stuart Deacons who is our director today uh, did quite well on our game this week remembering previous fixtures with Stockport County of which in the championship well back when it was Division 1 Dave Chandler was actually involved uh, against us but he's now currently in charge been in charge for about a year now just over a year November yes yep and uh, you can see uh, that's, a, that's a strong win, win percentage. What did he bring to you last season when he came in? What sort of quality did he bring? It's a good question. It's one I've asked him myself uh, in terms of what did he actually do because in within five days of him taking training, he turned a passing sideways... Uh, don't don't lose at all cost team into a let's get two 0 up after seventy and let let the other team deal with it. He's, he's just he's just instilled a counter press, high press, really energetic style of play and the, the players that he's brought in every you know every every player that he's brought in has just added to that and it's. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And he, he's, he's, he's very humble about it. He sort of says, "Oh, I just do what I do," and you know, he, he, he demands lots from his players. You know, all, all the cliche things that you get from managers. Um, it's just been a breath of fresh air. I mean, you look at those win percentages; it's they're off the chart, aren't they? You know. I'm about to say, I don't know. If I, I, with the background noise, it's quite difficult to hear what, yeah. what the general conversation is. But those kind of win percentages across his whole um, career kind of stick out more than anything. A 53% win rate at 644 games is some statistic, and I just what, what do you think I mentioned just now what do you think is the main contributing factor to that is it uh, requirements for attacking football is it a slow breakdown and take a, a, a team on the on the break or, or what, what is this kind of yeah, main reason for that yeah I, th- I think it's the high counter press to be honest uh, he, d- he demands maximum effort uh, from, from all of his teams and he's, he's not just the money you know we have got lots of investment so he can pick the best players but he didn't have that at Colwyn Bay yeah. he didn't have that at um, he probably had it at file to a certain extent but yeah, yeah it's just that high press you, you'll see today um, the the, ch- the hunting down impact. Unless we play badly, the hunting the hunting down <laughs> impacts. Crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed for you. The hu- they hunt down impacts, don't they? And um, yeah, it's, it, it's just really pleasing to see. We've never seen this probably since '96, '97 when we played 4-4-2 under Dave Jones, and we, we, we won. We won. I don't know how, but we've never seen this at our club in our lifetime. So we're, we're just we're just living our best lives. It could make for quite an, it could make quite an interesting game today if you guys play a high press. I think we might struggle against that. Um, we lo- we tend to be a team that like to have a bit more freedom on the ball and kind of make our own way towards the opposition. So if you guys are high press, that will really create a good game today. We did also just see there your last five. Uh, the, we had a, an exit in the uh, FA Cup to, to Warsaw, the, uh, the Polish side, and a 1 0 defeat to Grimsby. I, it looks a bit of an unfair reflection for me when you look at those last five, though, because I think you're, you're only one defeat in six, only conceded the one goal in the league to Grimsby. What's been the sort of centre of what's been the, uh, the driving force behind this sort of upturn? 
Just another in presentation the national should be made just before the kick off like, today could be what we um, In the national, we were just kind of the same thing at the start of the season. We had a really shaky start, and then as soon as we got to the swing, we got one, two, three, four, we got another 26 in one game on beat. So, 26 games on beat. 24, so it's in the tw- like, in the National League, yeah. Okay, we well, had yeah, completely the opposite. Anyway, go on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think it's just the fact that when we get into the swing of things, we just carry on the going, momentum. we carry on pushing through, and if we get one or two losses, it's bound to happen at some point, but we always bounce back quite well, so it's just good men- good positive mentality really, I think, yeah. attacking mentality. And resilience, excellent. Well, thank you very much guys. We, uh, just as we, we just get you over to you want to get round to the away end today uh, first is uh, obviously to that lane um, so thank you for joining us of course we do end just as the uh, background noise seems yeah. so I do apologise for that always no, typical isn't it <laughs> the way. but um, no thank you very much enjoy the game today do you want to give us a quick score prediction Dan score pitch for today um, I'm going to go 2-1 County you're going to go 2 okay yeah uh, I'm going to say 2-0 I don't, I don't think we'll concede no fair enough we can't I, we'll come to our predictions later yeah. but, um, <laughs> I don't think we can really argue about yeah. scoring <laughs> at the moment no but no gents thank you very much thank you very much cheers and uh, yeah uh, enjoy the game enjoy cheers the Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to look, uh, Tom and I are going to look at uh, Zach Robinson, I believe, yeah? Let's yeah. just give Stuart a little nudge in a wink. <laughs> so uh, we'll get his stats up on the screen. We have a video as well. Ah. Robinson steps up, no mistake from Robinson, fires home, look confident. Perfect. And obviously, a bit of Zach Robinson there who returns obviously to the bench today as Nick makes his way back into frame. Uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to a bit of the ladies' action uh, and. Um yeah, the women's team back in action on Sunday, um, tomorrow, as we have probably our biggest game of the season as we host Charlton Athletic in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Um, it's an incredible achievement for us to get this far. We're beating two teams from the division above. Um, Charlton are championship side, so two divisions above us. They're going for promotion into the Super League. They are a full-time side, full-time operation with all their players and staff. Um, the game's at Car Shorten tomorrow, 3 o'clock. It'd be great to get a massive crowd down there if we can. But it's, it's going to be a real test for the girls tomorrow, and it's something that we can do. You know, we need as much support as we can get. Absolutely. How important is it in the cup to, to, to teams like us playing teams in divisions above? Is it how similar is it in terms of the um, men's FA Cup, where you've got to get teams from non-league playing, you know, big Premier League clubs in those big days? Out? Yeah, it's, it's it's great. I mean, obviously, the women's very few clubs play their games at the men's ground so you don't get as many opportunities to go and have that Premier League away day that you know we all want and dream of in the FA Cup but you still get the opportunities and this year for just about the first time in the history women's prize money has become noticeable yeah. so it, it's it's now at a stage where the prize money makes it worthwhile entering the FA Cup as horrible as that sounds it means it's just available and it just makes these big games even bigger because we know what it will do for the club if we win. 
Absolutely, and obviously for those that aren't aware, what's the season looking like for um, the women's team this year? We're, we're doing well, we're currently third in the league, joint second, we're still in the race, it's only one up still in our league, one up with no playoffs, which is you know, something we don't have time to get into today, but it's, it's, it's a big issue and it's something that we're still in the race for promotion. It was, we drew away to Norwich last weekend, which is our first away trip of the season. Um, they scored a last minute equaliser, so it was a bit gutting, but we're still in the race for promotion. We need a bit of luck our way, but hopefully we'll be able to get that. So we have, a new, we have another guest on the panel. Oh, we have to introduce oh, hello. a very, very important person. So, viewers, this is Zach Thompson of These Fine Gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A band that for many years were big supporters of the podcast, and without which, uh, well, we wouldn't be here today pretty much. So, Zach, thank you very much for all your support down the years. Oh, uh, glad, glad to help. Uh, I think the band's still going strong. I actually uh, parted ways with them about two or three years ago, but I think they're still going strong. So. Okay, good. Good to hear it. Um, Obviously, you've come over for your first to play all the way from Indianapolis. Yes, uh, it's quite quite a ways away. <laughs> and you flew in flew in yesterday and straight down to this, here to get a tour from All Right Stew. But yeah, it's still good. Right? It's still it's a good time. Stu knows quite a bit about this place. Um, and how long are you staying for? I'm here for about a week. I'll be here till uh, next Friday. So. And you're with a uh, party with uh, John Green today? Yeah, there's a few of us uh, from the Nerd Fighter group uh, with uh, John Green here. A uh, handful from stateside. There's uh, Canadian. I think uh, a couple from Belgium and Germany. So there's there's about six or seven of us uh, down here. I got to tag along. <laughs> um, following, of course. So how long have you been following us now from from the US? Uh, right about ten years now. Yeah. Got got uh, heard about the team from John in 2013. Started uh, actively following in 2014, 15. So that's, a, that's a good time to start yeah. with a, a promotion, <laughs> a day out of Wembley that we had, and yeah, it's been pretty, and then obviously, yeah, that's yeah good. getting to see the stadium. We were supposed to actually come here about three or four years ago, uh, about three years ago, uh, about three weeks before our trip, uh, COVID began. Wow. So we were supposed <laughs> to originally be at Kings Meadow, but i um, glad as much as uh, postponing three years didn't sound ideal, like we get to come to the new stadium, so... Yeah, and without wishing to speak ill of King's Meadow, no. this is probably a, a nicer place to visit as we look at it above. <laughs> I like it slightly better. You know. Slight, slightly better. King's slightly. Meadow had its, had its joys. Yeah. <laughs> the mic, Very few. The, the internal <laughs> mics weren't quite as loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Zach, how how have you made, or what have you made of our progress this season back down in League 2 for the first time since 2016? I wouldn't throw that we were going back down, but I do think we are punching closer to our weight now rather than every single game being a struggle like we've seen the last few seasons so getting to go to games and anticipating wins rather than well is this another of the what 20 some in a row that we uh, did not win uh, getting to see more uh, wins and games because from where uh, I am the only way to see games we do the, the eye follow and all that kind of stuff so seeing it on, on a phone compared to coming to see live games, I'm sure this will be much more exciting than, uh, no offense to Mike and Rob with the WDUN crew, but uh, <laughs> this will be a lot different of an experience for me. 100%. Um, we might just, um, I don't know if the, we might just have a quick another look at the, the team. Now, obviously you're here for a week and you come to the stage and the whole experience is going to be something you're looking forward to, but is there any of the particular current squad and any of those starting today that you're particularly excited about seeing? Um, I'm excited to see uh, Alhamdi uh, with, with the new to see what we get out of that. Um, it's going to be tough to replace uh, with uh, us all going away, um, but to see what the new signings offer, I'm excited to, to see what we got there. And whereabouts are you watching a game from today? So are you, are you with the Dunby Party? Have they got a, a box yeah, I think we're up in, in one of the boxes, the hospitality, yeah. Nice. That's where you want. That's where you want. Best view of the stadium. So, um, Zach, we know you're with the group today, so thank you very much for joining us. And oh, uh, I glad, glad to have Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Yeah. No, glad to have you here. Enjoy the rest of the well, Enjoy yourself today. Oh, yes. Hopefully the football can uh, give you a better day. And <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> get, some, get some points on the board. <laughs> meet, meet some people down at the pub later. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, and enjoy your trips in London this week. Oh, thank you very much. It, it's been great so far. I've been about 24 hours here, so. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, you're a big big wrestling fan. Yes. Know, a big wrestling fan. So I mentioned to Kevin Boris, who I know you're meeting up with 
this week. You know, if you've not already booked in a trip to Camden to see the birthplace of uh, Progress Wrestling. Okay, my, uh, I, I'm gonna try and get a hold of you later to see if you know a place to watch the Royal Rumble tonight. I can shout. I can give you some. Okay, okay. Oh, good insider yeah. info there. <laughs> I shout out for the Royal Rumble, of course, this evening. I forgot about. Oh that. yes, of course, it's Saturdays now. They do it on the mm-hmm. yes. Sorry, sorry. yes, I'll sort you out with that. But actually, that's quite good because you get to experience what it's like for us in the UK. Staying yeah, <laughs> to starting at one o'clock in the morning, I yeah. believe. I just go straight into breakfast. But anyway, uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, there's our uh, league table and uh, around the ground other games today obviously we find ourselves in 13th and how nice is it to be mid table um, yeah mid table you know, this is 16th surely mm. let's say 13th 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 yeah 13th. Uh, it, it happens when you get on a bit don't worry mate I'm like thinking we've, we've dropped a little bit I'm looking at going 16th 13th 13th yeah wow. look at that the, the playoffs are only 5 points away not unlucky for some but, um, no. Hopefully not enough for us today. No. no, hopefully not. What else have we got? What else takes you fancy there, George? Um, great. As soon as Stu's minimised that for uh, that to come to me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, Mansfield Doncaster. I think is obviously a big game, even though the the league positioning is wrong on that graphic. Um, yeah, and then Swindon Gillingham. Gillingham picking up a bit, doing well um, with their new signings. And Swindon, we know they're going to be a good team. So. It's, it's a couple of interesting games but again congratulations on Stu for getting the Mansfield Doncaster positioning's wrong on that graphic Doncaster have had an insane run of form to get up to second I was going to say Doncaster have done very well to get to second yeah. so, um, but hey that's a top <laughs> 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 What else takes your fancy to do, uh, Tom? But for me, looking at that, I mean, late in the morning, you know, there's three North Beamish last time now. I don't think that means an easy place to go. I mean, it is Wimbledon, but you know, they're ignoring. They might struggle. It was, I think, on its day, it has a good atmosphere. Um, it's, it's a big capacity stadium. It's a long old journey from London as well, so you know, you're away from home. And who knows what happens to League 2? It's seen some shot results, like you said. Um, Stephen has beaten Leighton Orient 3 0. I think I think many saw that coming. I know they're up at the top of the table, but Leighton Orient for a long while were leading and leading by away. Um, so they've kind of fallen away a little bit there. And who knows if you get a little freak result there. I think Swindon Gillingham was a bit of a, a hot tape. I think that would be a good game as well. Uh, you see Gillingham, I said earlier, their new ownership, and they've done some really, really good yeah. business and made some really, really good back of house appointments. Um, bringing in Kenny Jacket as well. I think he's like a director of football type. Of yeah. Um, and I think that can only be good for. Obviously, partnered up with Neil Harris as well, and that's some real, real calibre of management there um, in back of house. And then signings like Ollie Hawkins uh, and uh, Tom Nichols. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get the, yeah, <laughs> say, yeah. get the name wrong. Um, he, uh, I think that's that's fantastic strike force, and that will push them up the table. And I think I don't think they're going to have to worry about relegation uh, now. Yeah, no, I think that's the thing. I think it's weird for Gillingham to be in the position where they are, where they're twenty third or twenty second now, when we all know they're going to finish mid table. And if you know, if they'd have had a slightly better start to the season with the signings they've had in January, they'd be looking for promotion. Um, it's an absolutely incredible biz- business they've done in January, and it's. I'll be honest, if I was a Crawley fan or a Colchester fan, I'd be dreading every day of this transfer window because you are drilling them every day of signing someone and every day Crawley are losing someone. One thing to Gillingham owners, please don't close that stand just yet. Let us experience it one more time and then we, you can we, change we it. We want our farewell tour and the stand that is now officially falling down. We can now officially say that. That's very true. Do you know what the shame about that was? Is that, and I hadn't realised this until we were talking about Simon Bassi earlier and the fact that Tom was born in 2002. Um, so you wouldn't have actually known Gillingham pre temporary seated stand. The first two visits I ever had to Gillingham, that was the old terrace they used to have there. And oh, it was a perfectly was fine terrace. Oh, no, I was saying, was it worse? Yeah, <laughs> no, it was perfectly fine. And I think they had to change it because of the rules at the time yeah. about all season stages but really they had what four or five seasons at that level yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, I think they could have it I'll never forget the first time we went. I don't know whether you were around at the time. Tom, the first time we went back in the football league, yeah. and it was right at the end of the season, and we sold out both tiers of that stand, yeah. and feeling it shake underneath your feet every yes. time the ball came to our end. That's that's a feeling you'll never forget. I don't think I think it's fair to say all fans of lower league football will be cheering when that stand finally comes down. Yeah. I've done, it, I've done it three or four times, but the last one that sticks out was a very, very during Storm, Storm Eustace, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Standing in that, and all that happened was a Terrier Blade box could get in the crossbar. That was a very poor game. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think the last time we were in there, we had the 
go through this ginning of interviews yeah, everyone at home, but <laughs> Joe Pickett scored the winner there. We won 1-0 oh, yeah. early on in the season. It was a hot day, wasn't it? As well? Yeah. yeah. Day, yeah. yeah. I kind of thought probably the last time we had it. Anyway, sorry, Jimmy. We'll get back into some more football-based stuff. Uh, yeah, but we'll move on from Wimbledon and, uh, sorry, from WWE and drilling him into more Wimbledon stuff. Yeah, some Wimbledon stuff. Well, I was going to say, last time out, it's been two weeks since we had a game, and last time out here we drew 0 0 with promotion chasing Bradford, um, who then drew against Stockport 0 0 actually last time out. And what you made of our last, our form since, since January? I mean, we, even going before that, we, we disappointing draw with Newport. I mean, you talked about teams at the bottom worrying about yeah. teams coming up. I think Newport are very much in danger. That, yeah, they're that team that's going to slide backwards. Absolutely. So di- a disappointing draw, albeit with a penalty, should have been a penalty. Um, we, we got the win at Colchester. Good, good that was a really good team yeah. Yeah. to come back from behind, be resilient, get a late winner there. But Crewe, Sutton, Bradford... Not, not great, but we still end up with two points right? two clean Yeah, yeah I, th- I think the performances have, you know, we, we've looked tough to break down. I think that's what you get when you've got Alex Pierce coming in at the back. It does take away something offensively because you do have to drop a bit deeper because you have to cover him a bit. But it does give you a bit of defensive stability. Him and PK look like they've got a good partnership going. It'll be interesting to see how Lee Brown slots into that back four today. But we haven't looked like conceding. We haven't particularly looked like scoring either, which is a concern. But if League Two football, if you don't concede, that's a good platform to go on. The thing is, I think now is why it's quite exciting to look to a bench that's got yeah. the likes of Sam Pearson and Psycho Jana on it. Because, the, I mean, I can only go off videos of Jana. Uh, my mate, he's a Cambridge fan, he said on his debut he was one of the best he's ever seen, and then it kind of it came back. But he's got a moment of magic in him, um, and I'm hoping we can find a few moments of those magic uh, for the rest of this season. But And then Sam Pearson is absolutely rapid, and he's got a bit of flair about him as well, yeah. a little bit of skill. And if he comes on in you know, late stages of the game, tied back line and he's got as fast as he is he can really cause a breakthrough for us yeah I think that's probably perhaps what we're looking to do isn't it George we're looking to be tight be solid not concede and then with the pace really hit on the counter but, that, but that's the thing that you know Pearson, Jana, Zach Robinson on the bench as well today yeah. you know we've got three very quick very exciting players to bring off the bench so that is, is probably the game plan for us going forward for today and going forward for the rest of this season staying it for 60, 70 minutes bring on those three and just try and turn a team, try and really change it, bring on aggression and pace. Because um, let's be honest, when we got out of League Two in 2016, it was the it was the front line subs. Yeah. It was Bayo Aziz off the bench replacing Elliot and Lyle. And that's hopefully what we're starting to build now, and hopefully we can make use of that for the rest of this year and build on it going into next season. Mm-hmm. One thing I think we haven't spoken about, just in terms of transfers, obviously we had another chance to, is the recalls of loans. Yeah. And an interesting kind of thing where Brentford have recalled two of their players and I, it probably was injury related or style of play related what's that style, style of play, play. I, I, I think certainly for Paris it was style yeah. of play you know NYC's had his injury trouble but Paris you look at the team that Paris was brought in, in that role he played in the first couple of months was very much get the ball to him let him play through and now we sort of we were bypassing him after that mm. so I think that's and you know we're not going to talk about it much but where he's gone I think shows how much of the style of play was important in, as a part of that yeah absolutely and I think we'll move on from, uh, yeah. from, we'll from move that individual specifically but just on, looking I mean. into what we've got op- options now was, yeah. was like my plan is we've lost those players who we deemed to start of the season we thought they were like God's gift Yeah. but I think I'm, I know, people might see this as a bit outrageous I, I think We've replaced them well by the by only going off what's on paper. I'm not saying what I've seen from the 20 minutes from Armani Little, but apparently he seems like he's got something about him. Um, as a lot, I don't know if there's a lot of distaste or something about him. People weren't happy that we're loading someone from the bottom of the division above, but a change of environment can do a lot for a player. We've seen that where a player maybe hasn't worked out with yeah. us, but they've gone elsewhere and smashed it, uh, and that can literally be, be a case of a, a bad environment or them not clicking in that certain environment. So I'm looking forward to him maybe building a part with Woody uh, in terms of that defensive midfielder. Or George Marsh was was imperial against Bradford him and Alex Pearce for me were two very underrated players um, George Marsh showed his kind of Premier League academy pedigree I think with his weight of passes and the way he can, he can get into a game and I think we've missed that a little bit so as much as him and Woody are quite separate uh, similar, similar players I quite like that uh, yeah. as two defensive midfielders but yeah sorry just, uh, yeah I, I, think, I think Marshy's performance last time out really was his welcome to Wimbledon because it's something that you know we've been waiting 18 months for him to put in a performance like that and it's hopefully, I was hoping it'd be something he could build on um, so it's a shame he's not I on the team that, I think that's a bit harsh no I, can I, I just I, I've, I've come on the saying it and very, has, very I've, had, I've rated him a lot and praised him on the show but he hasn't had that game where you go that where we're talking about for weeks afterwards he hasn't it's the first time he's had that game it was interesting what um, Simon Bassey was saying on the show earlier talking about Armani Little yes. whether he is going to play as you know an 8 or whether he's going to go and play as a 10 
because with Pell, um, we've seen Pell being much more advanced, almost be a battering ram for Josh Davison to play off. So it'll be interesting to see if he keeps doing that or if I'm, because when Armani came on, he did drop in playing the deeper role. So it'll be interesting to see if he continues that today. Can I just clarify eight and ten, George? Because I'm not, I'm not sure what an eight an eight is in that formation. I don't know if Pelk is number eight, but he's going to play what you would consider a number ten. Yeah. yeah. So what, do you mean like more of a, maybe not a more sort of six? A six role, yeah. Six, like, a progressive six, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but that, that's what you mean. It's a six or an eight. It just depends on how you, what number you call it. But it is a. I've heard it called by things, but it, I call it an eight. Others say it's a six. It's, it's a numbers game. Yeah, he's, he's quite apparently he's a bit of a threat from free kicks as well, so there'll be a fight between him and Ethan Chislett to see who gets to take and them. And Brownie. And Brown as well. Or if you're me when I was mascot of Kingsbed, I kissed the Tempest logo, so uh <laughs> Oh, I'm always very positive. Uh, I'm going to go for a one all. Yeah. I, I, I think it would be one nil, but I don't know which way. I can't see this being both teams to score. Interesting. I said the last three kick would be a one. I'll right stick with it. I really I'm going to be excited to see what happens. And hopefully we can have some goals. It'll be nice to actually see it. It'll be an entertaining game. Thank you very much for watching. We will be back on the next one. We'll post that show. We're doing everything that happens this afternoon. Otherwise, he can once again through abroad on our follow stream. It's all the KK to that. And our updates on Twitter at Andrew Sigmund. Nine. Thank you, George. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Zara. I'm now sort of friends with Russell and Dan.